Okay, so now we have the set of EXRs. Um, if I double click on one of these EXRs, I can open it up in Photoshop, but, um, but you'll see that I'm not getting a preview of it or anything in here. Um, because the only two programs are really, or the only three programs we're really going to be able to use is look at the individual images in Photoshop, or we can look at the videos in either Premiere or After Effects. And so After Effects is nice and can you know, do a lot of stuff, but all I really need to do is convert this into a video. So I'm just going to use Premiere. So I'm going to type in Premiere. So we're doing Adobe Premiere, and I have um, CC 2015. 2015 is the first one that will actually recognize an EXR. Um, older versions of After Effects will, um, but in terms of Premiere, we, you have to have 2015. Um, there's also other programs like Nuke and stuff like that that will also recognize an EXR. Um, but right now, let's, let's keep it simple, because all we're really needing to do is just render this out. Okay. So I'm going to get to a point like this, and um, it's going to ask me to create a new project. Now, if you're doing a larger project, a larger editing project, you're going to want to be more specific with this, but right now I just need to convert this video. Um, so I'm going to um, just hit New Project. Okay. And these settings again, we could be more specific later, but right now I'm just going to hit that just so we can get in here and see something. thinking about it. In the meantime, I'm just going to sorry, open up a, a video or a folder that I can go digging through here for a second. Um, so Premiere is a, a pretty interesting program in that um, let's sort of talk about the layout here. Um, this actually this area up here is where we're going to be able to see the the source images, but we could also have like some effects or audio clips and stuff. Um, and this is where our final edit is going to be for our video, where we'll actually see the video that we can play back. Um, down here is where we can import in new files, and then here is where we'll have a timeline very soon that we can um, that we can look at and um, you know make pretty drastic changes to you know, when the video stops, when the video starts, um, all sorts of stuff like that. So um, what I want to do is just find, I'm just going to find a, an old picture here somewhere, and then, um, and then we're going to use that as a background here in a second. So yeah, I think, I think this one that I have here will work. So I'm going to right click, I'm going to go import and this is in the bin area. And so this is going to allow me to import images that I want to use. Okay. So I'm going to um, go to my images folder from my rendering examples. Now again, if you didn't have your project set, who knows where this rendered it to. You really need to you know, be very diligent about setting your project. But um, I'm going to go to images, and you'll see that I have this list of EXRs. So the first thing I want to, what I want to do is I want to click on this first EXR. So ball 001. I don't have to drag and select them all. I just want to select the first one because this is an image sequence, and Premiere is smart enough to recognize that. In fact, you saw when I clicked that, it gave me this option down here at the bottom for image sequence. And so if I click that and hit open, Premiere is actually going to drag in this video, right? And if I were to drag this video up to source, I could watch a, a, pre a preview of that video, right? Now this is just a preview of what's in here. We're n we haven't put anything on our timeline yet. Now again, I can put as many things as I want to in here. I can render as many videos as I want to, or if I just have some images, which I have, uh, I have one here. I'm just going to drag this into here, and this is just a a picture of um, an old barn that I took a while back. Okay, um, and so again, we can drag that up there and we can see. Okay. Now, um, what I'm going to do is um, 
I want to make some changes to this first before I drag it into my timeline. So I don't right now it's saying it's two seconds long. If I mouse over it, you'll see it gives us some information about it, and it's saying down there 29.97p, and that's the frame rate. That's saying how many frames a second it's playing, and that's not accurate because in Maya we were animating at 24 frames per second, not 29.97. So we need to change that. If I right click on it, I can go to modify and interpret footage. Okay, and this is going to give us a couple of different options. But the first thing we're going to change is our frame rate. So right now I could, you know, it's going to use the frame rate of 2997, but I can tell it to assume the frame rate of 24. And then when I hit OK, you'll see that the length of our video actually changes. Now it's 2.12. So now it's safe to drag this into our timeline. And when I do, it's going to generate a timeline in here with multiple video tracks and multiple audio tracks. And um, and you'll see that if I scrub here, I can play my video back in the, in the viewport. I can also scrub here and go through my timeline. Now it's really small, right? Like, and so those, we can scale that up with this just to get in there where we can see it a little bit better. Now, you can click these objects and drag them around to different points in time if you want a large gap of like wait time before you play that. Um, we can do that, but I'm not really wanting that. I do want to drag it up a layer though, because I can also drag this image in here. Right? That image is going to be a little longer. Right? And when I did that, I dragged it on top of it, now I can't see the ball anymore. Right? Um, if I drag it below it, I can. Do you see that? Now I see the ball on top of it. And so basically, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide that. I'm going to go and delete that uh, image. So basically, this black area, we have a couple of options. We can either, um, and, and this will only work in certain file formats, we can save the background we had rendered where it was completely black, or we can have have it have a transparency layer or an alpha channel. Okay, and so when we have an alpha channel, basically anything that wasn't an object will render out of Maya as having the option to be transparent. Okay? Um, but, you know, we can't, you may not be able to see it very well, but there's some stuff in here we also need to change um, to make this look good. Um, and so. We have this alpha now, but if I go to my ball, uh, EXR, and right click it on it, and go modify interpret footage, I can make it ignore that alpha and just keep the background that we had. Right? So that image is still down there below it, but it ignored the alpha, and now we're just keeping the background that was originally on it. Um, I need to go back to modify interpret footage, but if I uncheck that, you know, that will bring the image back. Something you do need to do, though, if you decide you want to use alpha, you need to check this conform alpha pre-multiplication to, but don't check pre-multiplied alpha. And so we hit that, and we're actually going to get a, a better outline around this ball if we do that. So you, you probably can't really tell much of a difference, but trust me on it that that's going to be something you'll want to do. <coughs> Okay, and now we have this composited image on top of this, this, uh, or this composited animation on top of this background image. Now I will show you, like, if this background image, like, it's it's bigger, like we're just getting to see like a section in the middle. And if we wanted to, you know, sort of scale out on that, that's one of the things that we have up here with our effects control. So if I select my image, I can go in here and I can also change the scale of that, so I can have it be something more like that, right? And so now we have a spooky ball flying through the forest. Ooh, it's a ghost. Sorry, I'm sleepy. Um, so we're going to go ahead and save this out as a video now, because we have this video inside of Premiere, right? But we want to save this out as an MP4, or something that we could, you know, give to our friends or upload or whatever. So, we're going to go to File, Export, Media. And that's going to pop up this 
um, export settings. Okay. Now, this is really important. Okay, let me find is that somewhere it will tell you the um, sort of expected size of the render output. Uh, I'm overlooking it. Um, but if we just use the default settings, it's going to put out a really large and not very good file. Like it's not. It's just not going to be that good of quality. Um, so we're going to make some changes here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change AVI to H.264. Okay? Not H.263, because that's down here somewhere too, I'm pretty sure. Um, H.264. Okay. And it's going to take it a second to make the changes, but it made some changes. And this is going to give you really good compression um, with uh, um, an MP4 video. Okay, I'm just pretty much going to leave everything else the same, um, except for if I want to name, ch ma uh, change the name or location where it's going to put that file, I'll do that under output name. Okay, and I can just put this on my desktop. We'll call it ball. Call it ball. save. Now before it actually, to make it actually render, or to compile that, I actually have to hit this export button. And so it's going to go relatively fast, just compiling that into a video. Okay. And now on my desktop, ball in the woods. There we go. We have a video. Now, the H.264 codec is, is actually really cool because um, this is what you, this is sort of the compression that you would use if you were uploading something to uh, YouTube or Vimeo or something like that. And so you're going to get a pretty good conversion just right off the bat and it's going to understand it when you upload it. Um, and so you're not going to have to wait forever for it to encode it and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, use the H.264. Also, the thing I would point out to you, if I go to my properties, this thing is 2 megabytes, like 2.5 megabytes. It's the size of an MP3, versus if you would have used the standard settings, it would have been probably 150 um, megabytes or more, um, sometimes even up to a gigabyte. So, <coughs> I want to show you that there's a lot of things you can do in here, though. And you'll see this red line. And this red line is kind of, that's our active area, right? So once we get outside of here, um, that's why it only rendered that section. So when I went to File, Export Media, um, you're going to see that it's, it's only planning to render my active range, which is... There's a place in here where you set that. Um, but if I if I were to change the length of that, do something like that, you'll see that now it's yeah. now if I rendered it, it would render out to there. Okay. So, if you have some files out here just sort of waiting, you know, and you go to render just this, it's going to render all the way out there to the end of this. It's just going to render that blank screen in between it. Okay? So, this is the ideal way to get your animations out of uh, Maya and into a video. Okay? Um, let me know if you have any questions, and I will talk to you soon.